All right, hello guys. How's it going? In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at that severe weather threat for today and through tomorrow and even in through Sunday a little bit. And that actually primarily looks to be a tornado threat at this point. We'll talk more about that a little bit later on. We're also going to talk about that major snowstorm as well. Now for today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think we will see any tornadoes this weekend? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now I did want to mention one thing here. I will be going live later today at around 4 p.m. is my plan as of right now. It could be earlier, could be later. I do have that scheduled live stream already posted and I'm going to link that in the description and in the pinned comment for you guys to check out and go ahead. I think you can click a button somewhere where it's going to notify you once that starts. I would go ahead and do that because that's going to be a big live stream and I'm very excited to talk about weather with you guys live. I'm very excited for that. Now we're getting into our categorical outlook here. And as you can see, we have a general thunderstorm risk within those two lighter green regions, one for Southern California, believe it or not, and then one for the South Central United States. We don't really expect any severe weather implications within these regions. Once we get into the darker green regions, that's where we start to see some isolated severe weather uh, impacts, such as hail, wind, tornadoes. They can be isolated. They can happen in the general thunderstorm risk as well, so be on the lookout, but it's not expected at all. Within that yellow region, that's where we have a slight risk of severe weather, and we expect some scattered severe weather impacts to occur within that yellow region there for Texas and a little bit of Oklahoma as well. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on, and we're going to talk about the individual outlooks for the wind, hail, and tornadoes in just a moment. Now here is that wind outlook, and if you're in the green, we have a 5% chance of damaging wind within 25 miles of a given location. Within the yellow region, we have a 15% chance of damaging wind within 25 miles of a given location. Now for the hail outlook, it's the same percentages, 5% and then 15% in the yellow, but we have that little hatched area, and what that means is they're expecting the potential for very large hail to occur within there. We are expecting supercells to occur uh, with this storm. So that's going to be our storm mode is going to be primarily supercells, which obviously includes the risk of hail uh, and tornadoes as well. Unfortunately, here is that tornado outlook. And as you can see, we have a 2% chance within 25 miles of a given location within the green region of a tornado occurring. And then within the brown region, we have a 5% chance of tornadoes occurring within 25 miles of a given location. Uh, so that is getting kind of high. Uh, and, and it did get upgraded this morning to a 5% chance, which is not good news at all. So we're going to start talking about the actual model guidance for today. So here's the high temperatures. We're expecting generally 70s and 80s for most of these severe weather regions. They're expecting those supercells. There is some 50s and 40s up to the north, and that's why we have a sharp cutoff of the severe weather uh, impacts because it's going to be so cold to the north. Uh, and look, it's 70s and then maybe like 20 miles away, 50s. So that is not good news when the cold and the warmth are interacting that much. Let's take a look at the dew points, and it's going to be generally in the 60s, but we do have a very strong uh, dry area to the north of 40s and 50s in the dew points. So again, just uh, a lot of interaction happening with two separate, very different air masses here, which is not good news at all. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on, and we're going to take a look at that simulated radar in just a moment. Now here's our CAPE or convective available potential energy and really what you need to know is this is thunderstorm food and fuel that really helps those storms really gain intensity and just build further. And generally we're looking for those 1000 plus amounts and you can see that we're right around 900 to 1000 there for our severe weather regions in Texas and Oklahoma so we are going to have enough CAPE there. And our significant tornado parameter this is a kind of experimental tool. Uh, but really, this actually does appear to be very high, actually. Those darker reds and then the pinks is indicating uh, some very large values there of the significant tornado parameter. So I am taking a look at some chance for some large tornadoes uh, today. And then if we look at that bulk shear, you can see that we actually do have uh, very high values here as well, indicated by those pinks and reds and even browns. So the bulk shear is going to be very sufficient. Taking a look at the simulated radar, this is going to be by approximately 1 or 2 p.m. today, so the afternoon. Uh, we do have some thunderstorms to the north, but our main area of thunderstorms has not developed yet. By the time we're reaching 2 or 3 p.m. there, you can see that we are beginning to see some larger, stronger thunderstorms develop there in the panhandle of Texas, uh, generally moving eastward from this point. Uh, then let's take a couple hours later, this is 3 or 4 p.m., and you can see that there's a line of thunderstorms developing now there for the panhandle of Texas. And then by the time we're reaching approximately, I would call this 7 or 8 p.m., you can see they're becoming a lot more violent. We see those pinks showing up there on the simulated radar and indicating some stronger uh, thunderstorms there. They look like supercells, in my opinion. It's very hard to tell from the simulated radar sometimes what the storm mode will be. 
But considering the values of all of those different things like cape, temperature, dew point, significant tornado parameter, I'm guessing we are going to have plenty of supercells around. And it looks like uh, multiple of them are around by this point. And then by the time we're reaching approximately 10 or 11 p.m. here, you can see generally the storm mode becomes a lot more multicellular. Or basically, they're all kind of mixing together and they actually generally become a lot less violent when this happens. But I still want you guys to pay attention closely because uh, we ha we do sometimes have embedded uh, tornadoes and supercells as well that can occur with these. So this doesn't mean that the danger is over. It just means that there's a little bit less chance, in my opinion, afterwards. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on. And we're going to talk a little bit about that upcoming major snowstorm. We're going to talk about the simulated radar and the total snowfall in a moment. And then we're going to start talking about Saturday and Sunday severe weather as well. Now this is around now from the time I'm making this video and as you can see we do have some snow showers actually already around for the four corner states uh, but by the time we're reaching around 2 or 3 p.m. tomorrow on Saturday March 13th you can see that we get a lot heavier snowfall a, a much stronger low pressure center there there is going to be some severe weather to the east we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment but for Colorado Wyoming Nebraska we're seeing moderate to heavy snowfall going on uh, pretty widespread and that is going to last a long time because here we are by 7 6 or 7 p.m. there on Sunday and basically, we're still seeing moderate to heavy snowfall for very, very similar regions. The low pressure center has probably moved like 100 miles over the past two days. Uh, and But we're seeing that heavier snowfall extend further northward as we're seeing it spread way into Wyoming, way into Nebraska, South Dakota as well. Uh, and then by the time we're reaching approximately 6 a.m. there on Monday, you can see that mostly that has moved out of Colorado and Wyoming by this point. And we're seeing most of that move up into the upper Midwest and portions of the plains. Eventually, by the time we're reaching about... 2 or 3 a.m. there on Tuesday, we see that break up, but look out west. Another snowstorm is on the way, according to the European model. And by the time we're taking a look at about 6 a.m. there on Wednesday, we see a very similar setup, a very strong low pressure center there in between Oklahoma and Kansas with some moderate to heavy snowfall for Colorado, this time Kansas and Nebraska. Uh, and that eventually moves up into the northeast, believe it or not, by the time we're taking a look at next Friday, which is very long range to so take that with a grain of salt. Uh, but there could be some snowfall moving up into the mid-Atlantic and the northeast eventually. All right, now what we're going to do here is we're going to move on, and we're going to move on towards the severe weather risk on Saturday, which is tomorrow from the time I'm making this video, or day two. We're going to talk about the model guidance and everything going on for our day two severe weather risk. And then we're even going to talk a little bit about our day three severe weather risk, and then we're going to get into the total snowfall from the major winter storm. All right, now here we are taking a look at our day two categorical outlook. Keep in mind, this is a very large slight risk, and I actually do think it is possible we see an enhanced risk for Saturday day two, but obviously I'll be updating you guys on this tomorrow. I do hope to possibly go live tomorrow, but I have to see what my schedule looks like, but I am going live today, like I said. Um, but we have that general thunderstorm risk, which remember, we're not expecting severe weather implications in this region, but it is possible. So if you're in that lighter green region, still pay attention. Within our darker green marginal risk, we do expect some isolated severe weather impacts there within that region. And then within the yellow risk area, that's our slight risk region, we do expect some scattered in severe weather impacts such as hail, wind, and tornadoes. Let's get into those individual impacts. And first off, we have the wind outlook. Again, 5% chance within 25 miles of a given location within the green 15% chance within 25 miles of a given location within the yellows. Let's move on to that hail outlook, and you can see it's basically the same. It's just extended a little bit further north there, actually. And then with the tornado risk, I don't like to see this. We have the 2% chance within 25 miles of a given location within the green region, and then the 5% chance within 25 miles of a given location within the brown. But that is much larger than it is today, actually. Uh, so we have a large area expecting a tornado risk, and they have left room to where I could see them upgrading this to a 10% chance uh, because of how big it is. So I, I, I don't like the look of this and I would not be surprised to see us get a, an enhanced risk here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the modeled guidance. And first things first, we're taking a look at those temperatures and it is a little bit cooler here on Saturday. As you can see, mostly 60s and 70s, not those 80s and 70s, but lower 70s, upper 60s is sufficient. So we are, it's, it's going to be good enough in general. Here's those dew points. And now we're taking a look at generally around 60s which is definitely good enough usually 60s is what you're looking for for severe weather so again just sufficient overall and then the cape look at how high the cape is we have um, remember 1000 plus is what you're looking for we have 1000 plus in the greens and then 1500 plus within the yellows and we even get into the oranges which is likely 2000 plus cape uh, so we're definitely 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 looking at a high cape event compared to compared to friday saturday is going to be a much higher cape event 
The bulk shear here, as you can see, is very high as well. Uh, and then here is that significant tornado parameter, and it's even higher than it was on Friday. We see the pink showing up, which is basically maxed out values here of that significant tornado parameter. Here's this uh, simulated radar, and as you can see, it's going to be a linear storm mode. But generally, I, I see some supercells. What is what this model is wanting to show is generally some embedded supercells along that line, uh, which we've seen some of our more major severe weather events in a storm mode similar to this, kind of linear but still supercellular. Uh, it's it's not. It's not going to be enough to really make me feel like we're not going to see uh, the chance for tornadoes at all. And then, as you can see, later on Saturday, these move generally towards the Oklahoma-Texas uh, border. Now, in tomorrow's video, I'm going to update you guys on what's going to be going on on Saturday tomorrow. We will be able to tell you a lot more as we will have generally more information. For now, here's that day three risk as well, which we will touch more on as well. Uh, so that's going to be for Sunday and through very early on Monday morning. You can see that generally moves further eastward. And as you can see, for Arkansas, Louisiana, uh, Mississippi, even up in through Tennessee and portions of Alabama as well, we do have that marginal risk. And then we have a slight risk in between Mississippi and Arkansas there. There's lots of room for expansion. This is day three. We usually see them get a lot larger with these risks. So we will see what happens uh, as we move closer towards Sunday. Anyway, for that total snowfall, not much has changed. We're expecting a huge amount of snowfall to occur. Uh, up to 70 inches of snow is what this European model is calling for there in Wyoming and Colorado. Uh, but generally 24 inches plus, uh, mostly within those blues, purples, and kind of pinkish shades there uh, for Wyoming, Nebraska, South Dakota, and Colorado as well. Anyway, for today's confidence tab, we're taking a look at about a six out of six confidence. Uh, we can't really get any more confident than this. We're taking a look at some very short range implications here. Uh, and we're really just expecting it to go exactly the way we think it will. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, which states do you think will be the most impacted by this major winter storm? And James Marr said, I think either Wyoming or Colorado will be the most impacted. And judging based off of the amounts of snowfall they're expecting, I would have to certainly agree. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Sebastian Dow, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Alan Belemo, Adam S., Larry LePan, Donna Carnes, Cameron Marshall, and Aiden Mattis. Alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Alan Cherry, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Michael Buell, Cap Bite, Charles Stinnett, Kellen Manhart, It's Jay, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Flago, Garys, and John Colisi. If you would like to be a part of this patron end screen of the day, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I'll see you guys in the next video.